Hi guys, it's Tina Richardson. Dylan Schumacher. <laughs> I thought Defense. I was I was going yeah, first. You, you, you learned it. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about uh, Dry Fire Part Two, and uh, this is be safe about it. Uh, there you're working with a gun, <laughs> and guns are dangerous. So Daniel, how should people start by being safe before they practice a dry fire? Session? Um, well, first, you guys, you need to follow the four rules of firearm safety at all times. They apply 100% to dry fire practice. Yep. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do when I uh, dry fire practice is I'm going to take my gun out, the holster, I'm going to pop the magazine out, I'm going to rack the slide three times to make sure that there's no bullet in there, and then I'm going to lock the slide back to the rear, I'm going to visually inspect it, and then I'm going to stick my finger inside the chamber to make sure nothing's in there. I know that's extreme, uh, I've never even had a bullet survive the third um, rack of the slide before, but again, you're not... You're not playing with a toy. This is a gun that's designed to kill people. You want a guy, be be a Nazi about safety. Like mm -hmm. if there's one thing we're Nazi about, it's well, safety. We don't tell anybody to be Nazis. Well, that's true. No, don't be a real Nazi. Just be a safety Nazi. Yeah. Um, because again, you cannot afford a negligent discharge, mm -hmm. right? You can't financially or emotionally afford that. Yeah. Uh, just, just especially if you're in some kind of urbanized or suburbanized area. Uh, that bullet goes through a wall, it goes into your neighbor's house, it goes outside. I mean, it's bad news. You're, you're done after that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Again, four rules always apply 100%. Um, we can link John Lavelle's four rules video. Oh, that's a really uh, good we don't video. need to go over that yeah. again. But um, yeah, be safe, triple rack the slide, check the chamber, put your finger in the chamber. Yep. You know, you cannot. You, you never want to have that moment where you're like, oh, oh shit, like as you're pulling the trigger. I wonder if I checked that. Like, never no. have that moment. No, no. So. Never. So, yeah, so that's one. Make sure your gun's empty. The second thing we're going to talk about, guys, is uh, putting putting some orange plastic safety rounds in your gun. So this is uh, just, uh, I bought these on Amazon. They're like, I don't know, I don't remember how much. I bought them a couple years ago. but Cheaper than real ammo. Cheaper than real ammo, little plastic orange safety round. Now, what I would suggest you do with that is take your magazine, take your gun here, right? You put that thing in the mag. You're going to load your gun just like normal. Okay. And now... I can check, and when I chamber check, I can see the orange in there, right? So I know that's not a real bullet. I'm mm -hmm. okay. Then I'll press out, right? I'll work on my trigger press. When I come back, I'm just gonna rack it just a little bit to get that reset. Again, I can look, I can see the orange. I can slam it home. I can get my trigger reset. I can so you, you guys, you see you can keep that safety around in there all the time. You don't have to rack the slide the entire way, which isn't a bad, which is a bad habit to get into if you're like, short stroke in the side, but again, yeah. that can be practiced later. Uh, at this point, we're just making sure that the gun is safe yep. for dry fire practice. So that, that's option one. If, so if you live in like an apartment, or you live somewhere where you don't have like a basement wall, which is typically the go-to, right? Pra dry fire practice against a basement wall, because if somehow you as an idiot forgot to clear gun, and you do end up pulling that trigger with a live round in there, it's not gonna go anywhere. But if you don't have that option, or even if you do, you can put an orange safety round in there. Right? When the That's consequences the are this deadly, you guys, you cannot be careful enough. You Just, really cannot. Yeah, you cannot be careful enough. Uh, second op third option, second option, second option, is use a, a uh, training barrel, right? So um, I don't have one right now. It's upstairs somewhere. But my point is, is it's a, it's a plastic little barrel, and it replaces the entire barrel in your gun. Again, it turns your gun into a non-gun. At that point, it is your gun is not going to function as a gun. You can't load bullets in it. You can't do anything. It renders it completely inoperable. They're like... 16 18 bucks on Brownells. Um, so that's another option. Just take that whole barrel out, put a barrel in there, and then you know there's, there's no way that I can ever have an accident because this mm -hmm. isn't even a gun anymore. Exactly. And you can still practice that trigger. You can still practice your draw. Third option, uh, can you grab that, that yeah. safety gun there, is at, at this point in your training, right, you should have a blue gun, or in this case, a red one. Uh, this is off my M&P. Um, big deal. I mean, just, just get some kind of blue gun or mock gun that's going to fit in all your holsters. Or your whole situation. And, uh, and Dylan's with. kid bit the front side off of he didn't ours. He bite so. it. He dropped it, oh. and then it. Oh, then okay. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Still anyways. though. Yeah, so that's not really that doesn't work for that so much anymore. But uh, get a get a blue gun. Mm -hmm. I know they're a little expensive, and I think like 50, 60 bucks depending. But it's cheaper than going out and shooting a day's worth of ammo. So and, and then you can practice with that all the time at home. You don't get the trigger pull, but you get to work on your draw, your that's stance. Right. You know all the really important things. Yeah, and if you get a buddy, right, and you come over, I can point this at Daniel. That's mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. Right. Um, and so you can practice drills and drawing on somebody uh, because it's a piece not of plastic. A, not a gun, the four rules right? don't apply to it. So those are some options, and we're going to cover a little bit in the next video here about uh, 
what uh, actual like weapons manipulation stuff you do with this because you can't trigger pull like Daniel said, right? So that's that's not used for that. Mm -hmm. But be safe about it, guys. Like Daniel said, you cannot afford a negligent yeah, discharge. No way. Um, can't happen. I don't know. You got so and if, uh, if you ever get nervous and feel like your gun's still loaded, just put on check. check I'll be dry firing, and I'll have been dry firing for like 20 minutes, and I'll pull my gun out and double check it again just because I'm afraid that there's something yeah. in it. You can't so, check I don't too much. Yeah, be really careful. It's the sure. more, most important part of dry fire practice. Yep. So come up to Minnesota, invite us down to where you're at. Like or dislike, leave a comment, do brave deeds and endure. Thanks, guys.